just, I've been, listen, for two weeks, I've sat there and stood there and I have waited to tell you this right now. And and maybe I should have done it before, but the Lord just prompted me again. So here's what I'm going to tell you. There's people in the house today that are broken or dealing with broken things. And God is getting ready to restore. Hear me. He is going to restore, but it's not going to be just as good as it was before. It is going to be stronger and better than it has ever been in your life. Hear me this morning. Understand, it cannot happen because we sing a song. It can happen because we call on the name of Jesus this morning. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do very quickly. I'm just going to ask you, I'm not going to ask you to step out. That's your decision to do what you want to do. But here's what I'm going to ask you to do this morning. If you've got something that's broken, maybe it's a family member, maybe it's a relationship, maybe it's your finances, maybe it's your health. I don't know what it is, but if something's broken today and you're ready for God to restore and bring new life into it, stronger than ever before, I want you to lift up your hand. I want you to come forward, do whatever you want to do, but it's time to acknowledge this morning that God is restoring what has been broken today. Second verse, come on. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. Over fear and all anxiety. Yeah, yeah. I said to every soul held captive by depression. I speak Jesus. I speak Jesus. Come on, do it again, do it again. Oh, I just want to speak the name of Jesus. That which is broken, God is restoring. So every dark addiction starts to break. Yes. Oh, declaring there is hope and there is freedom. Come on, I speak. Jesus, come on, say your name. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is light. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn Come on, come on, come on. Jesus in the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family. Jesus for come my family. Come on, somebody family. speaking over your family this I morning. Speak the holy name. His name. This morning is a little bit different, but that's all right. Here's what I want you to do this morning. If you have a family member that is unsaved, that doesn't know the Lord, that is lost, and you know they're lost, here's what I want you to do. She's going to sing that verse again, but I want you to speak the name of Jesus over that family member. You say, Pastor, I got five or six. Speak five or six names. You say, Pastor, I got a whole group. Speak over every one of them. Listen to me this morning. Jesus can go outside of it. How many of you know he's not in this field? It's not about him being contained by this building today. It's about him going through the power of the Spirit, even now, right where they're sitting and touching and reaching and moving in their life, convicting and bringing power that they have never felt before. You don't know where they're at right now, but Jesus does speak it over them. Come on, speak it over them. Pull their names right now. Start calling their names out right now. Jesus from the mountains. Come on. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Come on. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name of Jesus. Jesus from the mountain. Come on, say 
Jesus from the street. Jesus in the street. Over darkness. Jesus in the darkness. Over every enemy. Every one of my family members. Jesus I'm speaking for Jesus my family. over I speak the holy name of Jesus. I want to share something I, I I was hesitant to share but I think it's important to share so people understand life is real for everybody in the building how many know life's real for everybody good things happen for good people sometimes bad things happen to good people too and, and I'm not going to just tell you hey you get saved everything's joy unspeakable and full of glory and it's going to be easy and you can but, but I, I've got a brother who is quite a bit younger than me. He's about 25. And uh, he has dealt with addiction, whether he knew it or not, his whole life. Uh, my father was an addict. And he's seen that growing up. I remember as he was a little boy, he would come to our house and he'd spend the night. He would come to kids church and we would we would we would talk about you know Jesus and asking him into your life and letting him be the Lord of your life. And I, I remember praying over him, saying, God, use him. Save him and use him. Save him and use him. And over the years, as much as I love him, I've seen behaviors and I've seen things, and I thought, Lord. He's a good dad, but he doesn't know you. He's trying to be a good husband, but he doesn't know you. He's caught in addiction. And uh, a few weeks back, now, he's in jail. And you say, Pastor, why are you sharing this? Listen, I'm not sharing anything that I don't want you to know, trust me. And I said, Lord, I remember praying, God, whatever it takes, because you can go to heaven with a sick, sick body. You can go to heaven with a kind of messed up mind, ever, but you can't go to heaven with a sick soul. I said, Lord, touch him. And uh, he sends me a letter. And on that letter, on the envelope, it says AK4C. Now, you don't know what that is, but about mm, 20 years ago, in kids' church, our kids' church was called the Anointed Kids for Christ, AK4C. 20 years ago, as he sits in jail, he writes that on an envelope. And then he asks me, Bub, will you send me some Bible study stuff? Yeah, yeah, that's awesome, right? So I... I get the Bible study that we're getting ready to do on Wednesday night. And I said, I'm going to put it in an envelope. I put it in an envelope. I put about 20 stamps on it because I didn't know how many it would take. I wanted to make sure he got it. And it got through the jail. And he sent me a message. He's got texting on, on his phone, I guess, in there. They, they have that. And he sent me a text. He said, they don't let me have it unless it goes through the chaplain. I said, I understand. They're going to send it back. He said, text me Friday night. He said, Bub, I'm, I'm trying to understand Matthew. I don't get this. Can you help me? You say, Pastor Steve, what are you saying that before? I'm telling you, I spoke Jesus over that young man's life over 20 years ago. And I don't know what it took to get him where he's at right now, but I know this. He may be in there for a year. He may be in there for two. He may get out in three months. I know this. He's going to come out, and he's going to be a better man. He's going to come out and serve the Lord. He's going to come out and be a better father. You say, Pastor, why are you telling me that? Because I'm telling you there is no one in your family that is too lost that Jesus is not able to go and change and turn their life around. Amen. Hallelujah. One more time.
just do me a favor and just call out the names of those that you know need Jesus today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Move, Lord. Minister, God. Touch, Holy Spirit. Bring them back to the cross. Sober them up if they were dealing with drugs right now. God, in the name of Jesus, let them sense something right now through the power of your spirit that is waking them up in Jesus' name. Seeds that have been planted years and years and years ago. Father, in the name of Jesus, let them begin to grow right now. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Are you thankful for the Lord in the house today? Come on, are you thankful for the Lord in the house this morning? Hallelujah. 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 Do, do, I'm pausing for a moment. I'm just, I'm pa I don't want to miss what God's trying to do here. I, I can go on. We can do. I don't want to miss what God's trying to do right now. Do me a favor. You say, Pastor, you're doing, a, you're doing a lot of favors this morning. You ask us. I know. But here's the thing. There's power in agreement. You have spoke over your family. Now I want you to agree with somebody beside you that God is going to move in their family. Come on. Right beside you. Do me a favor. Grab somebody's hand beside you. In Jesus' name, I believe together right now for your family. I believe that Jesus is going to move in your family. I believe Jesus is going to save in your family. I believe Jesus is going to heal in your family. That which is broken, God is going to restore in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Ah, God's going to do what doctors can't do. I said God's going to do what medicine can't do. God's going to do what therapy can't do. God's going to do. God's going to do. God's going to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Bless your name, God. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Say, Pastor, why aren't you moving? I'm listening to what the Lord would say today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Devil, take your hands off their minds. Devil, take your hands off of my kids. Devil, take your hands off of my family. I don't come in my power, but I come in the power of the Spirit of God. I come in the name of Jesus today. Hallelujah. 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 Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. This morning, I believe the Lord is saying, do not doubt what he is able to do. Do not question what he is capable of. For his arm is not short. He sees and he knows all. 
and he knows your heart and he knows your intent. Pray in faith, pray in standing, believing that God will, that he will, and he is able to do. Do not doubt. Do not fear. Do not waver and do not wonder. For God will. I said God will. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Anybody thankful? Any, anybody? Anybody? Come on. Come, come on. Come on. sit down. Uh, Jenny, run back in my office, in my trash can. There is a set of notes in your inner bracelet. Uh, listen, listen faith in what the Spirit of God's already done in this place. I, I've got to build your faith. I'm going to bring you some things uh, uh, that I that I talked about on Wednesday evening. I, I want to take you through, through the first uh, several chapters of the book of Acts in just a moment because here is how all of this is going to transpire that Pastor Steve is talking about this morning, it comes through our faith in the Spirit of God. It is the Spirit of God that brings all of it about. I, I talk, I, I, are you, you mad at me or anything? Okay. Okay. Can, you can stop. It's going to take a few minutes. Thank you. You can sit down. I want to do. Beginning so Wednesday night, I talked about beginning at the end of ourself. I I did not get done. It was, is yeah. I enjoyed doing Wednesday evening. But we talked about all of the things that we can do. Having good programs and having, having, having uh, a planning and all of that is important and it does matter. And I talked about everything that we do, we should do with excellence. But yet all of that has absolutely no impact on our world without the Spirit of God. And so... While he's doing everything he's doing and while he is saying everything the Lord has given me, I'm doing everything I can not to pick up this microphone. I started to pick it up at about three times and I'm trying not to do that. Uh, but but I, I want to do this. There was clear instruction from Jesus that I want you to go to Jerusalem and wait. Pray and wait. Say that with me. Pray and wait. Pray and wait. Praying's easy. Waiting's hard. Praying's easy. Waiting's hard. This morning we're praying. And so there is an expectation that since we have prayed, there must be something going to happen this afternoon. I'm telling you, continue to pray and continue to wait and see what the Spirit of God does. They were praying and waiting for 10 days to see what God was going to do. And on the day of Pentecost, there, there came an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God 
poured out in a way that had never been poured out before. The Spirit of God coming upon men in the Old Testament and, and, and throughout time the Spirit of God would come. But now the Spirit of God is going to endue with power and literally work on the inside of men. And wherever men and women go, the Spirit of God goes with them. And I've already declared this morning, it's not by might, it's not by power, it's not by human authority or human ability, it's by my Spirit. Everything that's going to happen in your life, everything that's going to happen in the people around you is going to be because of what the Spirit of God can do, not because of what you can do. You can't bring the miracle to pass. You can't bring salvation to those who are dead spiritually. You can't do a work of transformation in the life of anybody. It's going to take the Spirit of Almighty God. On that miraculous day, 120 turned into 3,000. There was a 2,500% increase on that day when the Spirit of God came and, and, and the, the crowds that were there, there were people from multiplicities of countries for, us for that specific time and God waited for that specific time when he could speak to the multiplicities of countries and they could hear the gospel of Jesus Christ declared in their own language when the Spirit of God enabled men and women to declare the gospel in a language they had never learned or never spoken before and now they're declaring and speaking a word and lives are being transformed and 3,000 are being saved. The Bible says clearly they heard them speaking in their own languages. What a miraculous thing. But it did not, that was just the beginning of the working of the Spirit of God. In Acts 1, there were 120 believers. But in Acts 2, there are more than 3,000 believers. In Acts 3, Peter and John declared the name of Jesus. Peter and John declared the name of Jesus and a 40-year-old crippled man from his birth stood up and walked for the very first time. It is ability beyond the ability of man. It is the ability of Almighty God living inside of a man. It is the Spirit of God that will bring the miraculous and change the circumstances of your life. In Acts 4, they prayed until the building where they were gathered began to shake. Amen. In Acts 5, it gets even better. The apostles, in the name of Jesus, healed the sick of their diseases and cast out evil spirits. In Acts 6 and 7, the danger and hatred for the apostles increased, but so did the power of God among them. And as, as their enemies increased, there were many, many being saved day after day after day after day after day after day. In Acts 8, the church scattered into Judea and Samaria. Their missionary work began. It began to spread around the world. They preached the message of Jesus everywhere they went. And then in Acts 8 also, Philip got transported. You've seen it in, in, in Star Trek where they had a transporter. God had one a long time ago in the book of Acts. And he transported Philip by the Holy Spirit from one place to another so he could lead an Ethiopian man to Jesus. <laughs> that was the whole deal. I need you over here. You can't get there fast enough. So I'm going to do a miraculous thing, and I'm going to transport you. I'm going to do something that nobody ain't ever seen before, and I'm going to save that man. Well, in, in, in Acts 9, Saul, the persecutor of Christians, became a follower of Christ. The man that was killing the church 
got saved and become the greatest missionary ever known to mankind. It was the Spirit of God. In Acts 10, racial and ethical, ethnic barriers uh, to spread the gospel began to collapse. In Acts 11, a church was founded in Antioch as the future base of missions to all the nations. In chapter 12, Peter was sitting in prison on death row. They're going to kill him. The church prayed, and suddenly Peter's chains fell off. The prison door swung open, and Peter walked out a free man. Hallelujah. That's the Spirit of God at work. He brings forth the miraculous. He brings forth that which is impossible with man and causes it to happen. Somebody shout miracles. Aren't dead. I didn't hear that. I said miracles aren't dead. Miracles are still happening in my family. You say, wait a minute, Pastor, they've not come yet. Pray and wait, pray and wait, pray and wait, pray and wait. It may have not happened yet, but it's coming. Pray and wait. It may have not happened to you yet, but pray and wait. It's coming. I promise you the Spirit of God will cause the impossible to take place in your life and in your family's life. In Acts 13, Paul began his travel from city to city, preaching the gospel, healing people with diseases, casting out demons, and even raise people from the dead who changed. I said, God, God didn't change. So I'm just declaring this to you. There should be an expectation and faith that God's Spirit will do the same today that He has always done. The miracle may look different. It may be a different type of miracle. But God gave us His Word, and He gave us these specific instances of the miraculous to build our faith so that we will cling to the hope that God is going to do it again. Man, oh, that's a pretty good commercial break, don't you think? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Say, Pastor, what are we going to do? I think you've heard a word. I think you have sensed the presence of God. I think we have a, an assignment. Dylan, can, can you get ready? Uh, I'm going to mess you all up. He's got to play a video. I'm going to show you a video. But uh, I, I've been, we, we're going to close with this song, and then we're going to show you a quick video. Is that all right? He's going to have to run back and forth. How many like to see Dylan run back and forth? It's, it's good. It's healthy for him. It's healthy. Healthy for him. I, I shared with him that I've been walking every morning. I'm getting up pretty early and, and walking around the neighborhood. He said, oh, you're walking in the morning? I said, yeah. He goes, why didn't you tell me? I don't want to walk with anybody. And I don't want to make him feel guilty for not getting out of bed because I don't have a Cooper at my house. <laughs> Amen. But uh, Monday morning I woke up and, uh, and this old song was going through me. It's going through my spirit. And I thought, I'll get this thing sung out, and, uh, and, and it'll be fine. And so Monday, as I'm walking, I'm listening to, to some preaching and a, and a service, and, and uh, kept singing it. And as I'm getting ready to go through a few things throughout the week, I caught myself singing this. And, 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 uh, and then yesterday, I was done. I wasn't going to sing it anymore. And it was, what, about 11? I said, hey, Dylan, do you know this song? He said, nope. I said, you should probably learn it for tomorrow. And he said something like, you're killing me. And then he got up here and he learned the song. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I, I, know, I know this guy's my son-in-law, but uh, I'm thankful for the work that he does for the Lord. He doesn't do it for me. 
He's been doing it since he was the official, uh, what was it, the pastor assistant, pastoral assistant. I thought it was a joke until I seen the card and then I seen in the church bulletin where they took pictures back in the day, like the church directory, he had his picture right there with his with his papa and he was the pastoral administrative, what, what was it, pastor assistant. He's not talking about it. All right. But maybe this song's been going through my spirit because it's a desire that I have. It's an old song. Some of you may have never heard it, but I believe a lot of you probably know it. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw Here's what gets you through after you've prayed and you've prayed and you've prayed and you're waiting and the devil's trying to tell you it's never going to happen. It's not going to work. You get closer to Jesus who is all things and you get a little bit of faith built up on the inside of you because no longer are you hearing what the enemy would say but you're hearing that he is the great I am that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think so draw me nearer nearer Blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to Thy precious bleeding side. That's your prayer. Can you slip up your hand and sing it? Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me Come on, one more time, sing. Draw me nearer, nearer to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed. I'm going to do the third verse. It's the same thing as the first verse, tune-wise. Okay? So, Consecrate me now for thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in night so draw me nearer nearer blessed Lord to the cross where thou hast died draw me
I'm going to do that verse again because I probably didn't do it as good as most of y'all can do it. But the last line is the most important one for me. And my will be lost in yours, in his. I don't know about you. I want my will to die and his will to live in my life. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer. Go ahead, yeah. Come on. To thy precious bleeding side. Is that your prayer today? Draw me nearer. Hallelujah. What I found, thank you, Dylan. I'm going to let you run back there. What, what I found is the closer we get to him, the more people start to notice it. When you stop doing what you used to do because you're closer to him, people start to notice. Amen.